source of my neshama. And every morning, I read this prayer. Elohai, neshama, shinatata bi, tohorahi. The soul which you give me, my God, is pure. Ata barata. Ata yatsarta. to me, you keep my body and soul together. You may know, because we've had a lot of Hebrew grammar, or you may not know because we haven't had Hebrew grammar, <laughs> that the little dot in the hay at the end of a word is a mapik and it means its own, and you pronounce it correctly. And we say this blessing every morning, and we breathe in so, up until last week, I understood that as, that's my life force. Thank you, God, for giving me the vitality to get up, to go out, to be, to exist in this world. And that's my neshama. It's my breath. It's what keeps me going. But this week, I learned something. And I learned it. Here, but I didn't realize it until I was done. And I had one of those aha moments. And I realized that the question <coughs> for me is something that we've all been stating here about us being present in what we're saying, and it's not me. But it's me talking. I'm the one that's giving the speech. I'm the one that's doing the presentation. It's my body, it's, it's me, it's my thoughts. So what does that me mean? Me being present. And as we know, the word for soul is also the word neshama, which also means breath. Am I breathing? Whatever that is, it's me. And now, be in that breath and be present. Thank you. 
you for growing so much in week. And since we all were here with Michelle's comment, it's one of the responsibilities that I take on when I come here, which is to stir up enough pots to make a difference in a very short period of time, which can piss people off or it can make big changes, etc. But the one thing it doesn't do is keep everybody the same. And that's part of the responsibility I take. My comment I would like to read aloud to you. You spoke from your soul. I once heard recently the person in what I do today who is the giant is a man called Peter Drucker. Mm -hmm. And Peter Drucker defies every presentation rule I teach you. He is old, he sits, he doesn't look at anyone, and he can mesmerize an audience doing everything that he shouldn't do. But that's because he's pretty drunk. So I would like to get Charles' comment that I didn't mind you didn't do them all because it was another experience. Mm -hmm. I sensed you could have, but that's not what that was about. This was, yeah. This was a different moment for me than Rally really teaching. That's right. This that's correct. A different experience. Let's start with Shalom and go right around the room. At first, you were talking to yourself. At the end of the talk, you were talking to all of us. You were effective both times. You were effective, it was clear that you were effectively <coughs> talking to yourself. And it was, at the end of the talk, you were also effectively talking to us. If it was, what if there was a break in there, two separate talks, it would have been, I don't know. It felt to me like it was two separate talks, but without the break in the middle. And the difference was the eye contact. I thought this was brilliant. Both, but see, <laughs> we'll just stop there. <laughs> and, and now I'm going to elaborate on that. I thought, first of all, you did teach. You brought a text which, I'll speak for myself, which I'm familiar with, but you brought it in such a new way that you really taught me something about how I can approach that text. And you did it through using your experience. I also thought it was fantastic as far as how you brought in the entire room. You made jokes, you made some comments which were directed towards some people, and, and that I felt really brought us together as a group during during this, even though we didn't like we didn't say anything. And your humor was great. And I felt like, I think the other thing was you used an experience which we as a group, or at least you alluded to an experience which we as a group had, and that was just very powerful. I think that's hard when you're only in a group or in an experience for such a short period of time to actually make use of it. And I think you did that, even though, you know, we just had last Sunday, we just had a couple hours already today, and so I thought it was fantastic. You know, I thought it was amazing, absolutely beautiful, and also very profound, I thought, which is a word, I'm not, not like Danny Gore, so I don't use that word very often. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I really thought it was really the, the, the connection that you made at the end, um, just between sort of um, whatever. It was just, I thought it was amazing. Very beautiful. Really, really beautiful. I really like the introduction of play on. Every morning I get up, thank God. And every morning I thank <coughs> God. I get up and thank God. That was beautiful. I started to write it down. I was writing it down as quote. I felt very uncomfortable with the pacing felt a bit slow, which made me anxious. As opposed to the sense of deep breathing, I felt very anxious. Mm -hmm. So you talked about being I felt most comfortable when you were in your introduction and when you told a few jokes. I think my own wrote it, but <laughs> still, it made me feel very uncomfortable. Um, I was very moved. I loved the reading. With the, I wanted to say the quote to you, but whoever had said to you, great glasses, maybe. <laughs> um, I loved it. It was like so intellectual. 
put them down on for a while. I gotta get glasses. <laughs>
But I also felt that if I say strengthen my heart, tuck in my heart, God's not in the process. This translation of God, he shall strengthen. If I hoped that God would be there, God would enter my heart, I would be strong, I would be able to continue the hope. And I hope you have some questions. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question just about which, where, where were the translations from? Do you remember um, which one was from where? This is more of a. I so actually found the other job. Look at him. I found the weight the first time in a New, uh, New Testament. Um, yeah, well. Like the Jerusalem Bible. No, no, no. Oxford. The little main Anchor? books that they give you? The yeah. Psalms with <laughs> right. the New Testament. <laughs> Something, yes, exactly. I'm not, I'm not a Jewish. Yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> The and then how about, and then how about the other one? Um, the strength in your heart is actually JPS. Okay. Um, I was thinking when you had the Hebrew up about the structure, mm -hmm. and it was actually really pretty amazing because it said, well, and with what you did there, that it went um, the parallel structure between the first line and the third mm -hmm. line seemed to imply a cycle, which brought me back to your story, and so I was wondering if you thought about that. Definitely, which is yeah. why you put it there. That was great. Back. Yeah. What was the connection for, between your studying and <coughs> your effect on the woman who you would meet at the hospital? How did you take your... What you I what I then did at the next time I saw her after I had remembered these, this pasuk is when I saw her, I was able to then cite a song for her that then was then grounded in tradition and in writings that was common to both of us. She was a Catholic woman. And I was no longer just talking from my or her experience, but we were grounded in tradition. And I, I quoted the song to her, and then she has on to, I think, that. So. Does that answer your question? Very much so. Okay. Yeah. It especially is very visual to me when you think of the beginning and the end. Mm -hmm. very, what you two had in common was the song, mm -hmm. Jew and Christian. Yeah. 
how did you, how did you plan to go from? I my intention was, I, I, if I understand your question, you asked us what these words meant to us, right. and we, we've got them. And you came up with the red, which came out of text, or out of commentary. Right. right. How did you? What was the transition between them? The transition really got left because I was short of time. What so had you planned the transition to do? I, I had some more. I was going to. I'm experiencing so much joy being here with you at this moment of your your chuppah and your union, your wedding, your joining together as husband and wife. And I use that word joy deliberately. Simcha is the Hebrew word that we find that expresses that joy in the wedding ceremony. It's in seven places. It's part of the seven brachot, the sheva brachot, the seven blessings that we say. Two of them actually include the word misameach, to be happy, joy. One of them says, Sameach Khatan Vikala. The Kala, the bride, the Khatan, the groom, are happy. There is happiness there. That's what we wish for you, Arthur, Linda. That you should have all of the things that create happiness in life. Sustenance. Cold tooth, as Rashi, the medieval commentator, says about his blessings. That's what the community wants for you. Then we go on to the next blessing that essentially says, almost, but not quite the same thing. It says, Misameach Chatan Im Kala. The groom should be happy with the wife, with the bride. And we understand also that the bride should be happy with the husband. What's the difference? The difference is that there are things that we all need in life to carry us through. But there's a special uniqueness in what the two of you are creating together today. And that specialness that uniqueness, that joy and love is something only the two of you can give each other, that special union. And that's what we all wish for you as well. Would you hear what you just did? I just took a deep breath, yes. OK. Um, you need to keep that in mind. Because you're not breathing. Right. You're holding your breath. Right. And it's the same thing that rape victims experience. If they hold their breath, they won't scream. Scream. Mm -hmm. You're doing that to yourself. Mm -hmm. Stop breathing. Mm -hmm. Go on. You want you. I. I
sentence. So don't worry about it. Linda and Arthur, I just want to wish you lots of happiness. Two of the blessings that we read in the Sheva Brachot, the seven blessings, one ends with Misamech Atan Vikala, the bride and the groom should both be happy. And the other is Misamech Atan Imkala, that the groom should be happy with the bride, the bride should be happy with the groom. Let's give her a hand. Do <laughs> you know why you just did that again? You're still up there. What was the difference between the first one and what you just did now? I honestly don't know. I can't articulate it. I Dabka chose to do this rather than talking about myself because I can get up and I can do a presentation on things that are not text-based and I can teach and I can do all kinds of stuff, but I still, so I don't know what it is. Okay, you need to do text-based in here all the time. Right, which is, I, I understand. That. That's why I, I did understand. It. What I observed just now is the lady who was sitting over here. Mm -hmm. The person who got mm -hmm. up here was from someplace else. I don't know where she was from. Mm -hmm. You've experienced this before? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. How would you di how would you diagnose the, what the issue is? I don't like being analyzed or critiqued. No, oh, but you're you you're a good teacher. Right. I pass. Uh, <laughs> let's pass. go around the room. The eye contact is very good. In fact, I decided I was going to just watch to make sure that you had eye contact. So on all the other presentations I wrote down, and I was like, she's not making eye contact with me, she's not making eye contact. Ah! And you had good extended eye contact with me. I felt the pauses were too long, and again, the wrong places mm -hmm. in your sentences. I noticed you used your space well mm -hmm. and you walked around and I thought that was nice. You also had a lot of front and back movement, which I thought was a good use of space. I also really liked the silence at the beginning. You took a moment to look around before you started. And I Excellent. Felt like, yeah, it really created the space to be in the moment. You're around. 
Thank you. 